Hey guys, how you doing? I know many of you are waiting for me to post this video so you can go ahead and start working on your assignment, which is called E-Learning Activity 17, Macbeth Tragic Structure Sort. <clears throat> All right, so I've been working on a few other things just now, but let's look at the activity, shall we? What is this? No, it's lesson plan. Don't need that right now. All right, here we go. So here we are, guys. All right, so basically for this activity, you got five passages, okay? Each each passage corresponds to one of the five components of tragedy, okay? And the, the five components of tragedy are these. Number one is the tragic hero. That's a guy that's nearly perfect, but he has some kind of flaw. So the hero himself, okay? All right, the second one is Marsha, which is a fatal flaw. Okay, so this is the quality that brings the hero down, all right? So anything in the text that resembles that or that reminds you of that bad quality that Macbeth has, of course, I'm just going to tell you he's the tragic hero, right? Uh, then you're going to, that's the passage that's going to be the Hamarsha passage. All right, Peripatia, reversal of fortune. So if you see in the text where it talks about Going from rags to riches or vice versa. Somebody having being on top of the world one minute, the next they're down. Or the other way around. That's peripatia. Anagnoresis. This is my favorite. Okay, Anagnoresis means recognition. This is when the hero makes a realization that uh, I guess he kind of realizes he was doomed all along. Because his fatal flaw is bringing him down. So we'll see that in the story as well. Return to social order. Okay, so usually this is the one at the end. Okay, so I'm going to give you guys three. Okay, I'm going to give you the first three and show you how to do them. The last two should be easy. Okay, but you got to do them on your own. All right, so there's I'm going to give you the modeling and then I'm going to give you a way to do it. Okay, all right, so let's scroll down here. All right, this is passage one. Now, this is, if you'll notice, it's from Act Five. So the first passage is from the end. And honestly, this is pretty good because this picks up right where we left off when we were talking about Macbeth. Right, the last thing we talked about in our reading was the messenger came to Macbeth and he said, uh, As I looked toward Burnham, I thought the trees began to move. And this is fulfillment of the prophecy the witches gave Macbeth, right? This is the prophecy fulfilled. The prophecy is um, Macbeth will be safe till Dunson, till um, Burnham Wood comes to Dunson Aid Hill. So the messenger comes and says, Macbeth, I see the hill, the trees coming up the hill. All right, so now Macbeth is starting to get worried. Another prophecy that the witches gave Macbeth was this uh, No man of woman born can kill you. Right? And then the other one was be, Beware Macduff. All right, so the first prophecy, though, is You'll be safe until the trees start coming up the hill. And they do. All right, so he's worried. This is what he says to the messenger. If thou speakest false, false upon the next tree shalt thou hang alive till famine cling thee. Okay, if you're lying, I will hang you from the nearest tree until you die of hunger. Terrible, okay? Um, all right, here we go. He says, essentially... Don't worry until Burnham Wood comes to Dunsinane. He's repeating here the witch's prophecy. And now a wood is coming to Dunsinane. Then he starts screaming. He says, prepare for battle. Go. Um, ring the alarm bell. Blow wind. Come wreck. At least we'll die with harness on our back. All right. So this is Macbeth pretty much accepting his fate in an almost courageous way. And he says, fine. Um, said I'm going to die, now I am, to me, this is the recognition, okay, this is where he realizes that the fatal flaw, which is called an agnoresis, right, so I'll go down here, type in SA, go to the five, you don't have to, this is one word, it's fine, Anagnoresis. all right, explain why you have chosen 
why or how this textual evidence given here represents the component of the tragedy you have chosen. Okay, so I would say something like this. Here, maybe let me see, realizes that it is is tragic flaw ambition which has led to his downfall. He accepts his whoopsie. This is a cool, cool part. He accepts his fate heroically and like a man. Of course, that's not spelled right. All right, so that would be a good answer for number one and two. All right, let's look at the second passage. In the second passage, this is Act 5, Scene 8. Okay, so essentially, <clears throat> this scene, this is a little hint. This comes at the very end of the play. Okay, so, spoiler alert, hopefully you've read all the way to the end, but Malcolm is the guy who kills uh, Macbeth. The way he kills him, remember, nobody of a woman born could kill Macbeth. But Malcolm said, or I'm sorry, not Malcolm, Macduff. Macduff says, I'm, Macduff and Malcolm are buddies. Macduff says, um, from my mother's womb, I was un, untimely ripped. So if I was in class with you right now, I'd ask you, what am I saying here? He was untimely ripped from the wound. Basically, he was like me. He was a C-section baby. Maybe some of you guys out there were C-section babies. But he wasn't born vaginally. Okay, so he wasn't really born, I guess you could say. He was taken out. He was surgically removed from his mother's stomach, right? And that, yeah, that happened back in Shakespeare's time. So anyway, Macduff is technically not from a woman born. So all the prophecies now have been fulfilled. Malcolm, uh, Macduff kills Macbeth, cuts his head off. That's what you got to do. You got to cut the head off. So here we see Act 5, Scene 8. This is the last scene of the play. Malcolm is making a speech. And this is what he says. I won't even read the early modern English. I'll just read the Shakespeare. It won't be long before I reward each of you as he deserves. My thanes and kinsmen. I, you all earls, the first earls that Scotland ever had. We have a lot to do at the dawn of this new era. We must call home all our exiled friends who fled from Macbeth's tyranny. And we must bring justice to all the evil ministers of this dead butcher. Uh, this and whatever else is called to do by God, we have to make things right, blah, blah, blah. All right, so here we have Malcolm making things right. Remember, told you guys, uh, a tragedy has a public and a private element. The private element is Macbeth and his wife, you know, um, doing all these crimes, moving up. The public element is all of Scotland is suffering with this situation. All right, so here we have the very end, this is our restoration of social order. Okay? Which of the five elements of tragedy? Restoration social order. Okay. Here, whoa, gear, like Richard Gear. Here, Malcolm is returning things to the way they were before Macbeth committed his, let's see, crimes and um, Disturb the country, let's say that. All right, so now the social order has been restored, right? Restoration of social order. Cool. All right, number three. The last one I'm going to flat out give you the other two I'm just going to talk about. All right, here's in the middle of the play uh, Banquo, he's worried. He says this, Thou hast it now, King Caldor, Gloms all. 
as the weird women promised, and I fear thou playest most foully for it. So you've got it all. Now you're king. You're set up as a king, and I have this feeling you did something really bad to get that. So Macbeth has gone from Thane of Gloms, which he was originally, to Caldor, to the king. All right. This is, of course, the peripatia. That's a Greek word, so you can't find it in the dictionary probably. But what it means is reversal of fortune. No. Yes, that's exactly right. Reversal of fortune. All right. So here, here Banquo is expressing worry about Macbeth sudden rise to power. Okay. And it expresses, of course, um, that reversal of fortune is so important that we've talked about. All right, let's just talk about these last two, okay? I'm not going to give you the answers, but you, there's only two left. All right, here we are. Act 4, no, I'm sorry, Act 1, Scene 7. This is the end, right? Or this is the very beginning. Uh, Beth says, if it were done, when it is done, then well, twelve were it done quickly. So I need to go ahead and get this thing done quick. And this is an aside Macbeth is making. He's talking to himself, and he's, uh, I guess you could say, he's contemplating his his own nature, okay? As you can see here at the very end, let's go down to the English, modern English. He says, um, people will shed a flood of tears that will drown the wind like a horror, horrible downpour of rain. I can't spur myself to action. The only thing motivating me is ambition, which makes people rush ahead of themselves toward disaster. You guys should know at this point what ambition is. We've talked about it and what it would mean if you look at these, the ones we haven't used. Okay, The ones we haven't used are the first two. Okay, Tragic Hero and Marsha. Fatal flaw, okay? So, think about what that passage is mainly talking about. And the hint I'm going to give you is this. The passage is mainly talking about this, okay? All right. Last one. This is also Act 1. This is Scene 3. This is where we start the story. It's talking about Macbeth and what kind of person he is. The king hath happily received Macbeth. Macbeth, um, thy news of thy success when he reads a personal venture in the rebel fight. Okay. So he's talking about Macbeth. Thy praises in the kingdom's great defense and poured them down before him. So what kind of person is Macbeth, all right? Um, how does he act? What are his attributes? Is he brave? Yes. All right. And the little comment I give you here, and the comments will help you. Here, Ross is establishing Macbeth's early reputation as a noble person to be admired. Right. All right. So the comment should help you figure out if it's Hamarsha or tragic hero. And then all you got to do is answer why. All right. So the last four you guys have to do. We've done six together. You're number seven, eight, nine, and ten on your own. Okay. Good luck.